to ban and pick uh, first. So we're going to be waiting for them to do this uh, as we wait. This is usually a long process, Bremen. Uh, you know, they have to sit there and think about what they want to do and also the players are going against. And a lot of times this is done ahead of time. But this is, a you know, a friendly match. You have to imagine they're kind of coming into this Sunday day, you know, Sunday uh, afternoon. So they're going to take some time to maybe think through what they want to do for their first pick. Yeah, it's a tough call because either you're you're trying to ban against what heroes are strong in the current meta, or you're you know specifically targeting a player that you may know a lot about on the opposing team. Absolutely. So still waiting. Oh, we do have the first ban though, and this is not a huge surprise. Uh, I don't know if you could see that, but Team Task does ban Black Feather. Black Feather. He has been huge lately. He got those secret buffs uh, going into patch 1.12, I believe, and uh, yeah, he's a monster. Yep, so Vertigo is now on the clock. Uh, they get to pick their next band. These bands are global, which means nobody in the game of these matches can play these heroes for this match. Uh, so these heroes are banned across both teams. This is a really important strategy for competitive play. We see this in VGL and in VIPL, the bands and the draft system. And this basically takes what is a fairly medium-sized hero pool and allows you to strategically restrict the enemy team from playing what may be their best hero, what may be a broken hero. And Bremen, I think it's safe to say that the, the Black Feather pick is really based on it being a broken hero. Yes. Yeah, he's, he does have a bug that's kind of gotten around, and uh, also you get the right items on him, and he becomes uh, very difficult to deal with, especially late game. Yeah, so uh, Vertigo gets their ban. That's absolutely correct. Black is really, really tough to deal with late game once he starts going, scales incredibly well, and now so early game strong. But Vertigo goes in with the first ban, and they ban Celeste. So interesting decision there by Vertigo to start off with taking out a mage. Uh, I, I guess this is maybe maybe the one hero they don't feel like they want to have to go against uh, in the lane. So that's what they pick. And uh, going right to Team Task, they go with their first pick, and they actually pick Kestrel. Now, um, just so you guys know, I don't have Kestrel as part of this Vainglory draft mode, so I can't actually show you uh, Kestrel pick. But Team Task has picked Kestrel. So now Vertigo is on the clock to pick their next two. As is normal, uh, the team that picks first gets to pick one. The team that picks second picks two heroes, and then it goes two heroes for the first team, one and one. So there you have, uh, that is the standard draft mode. Uh, so we're just waiting. Now Vertigo's going to pick, and they pick Arden and Sky. I'm loving these picks so far. Kestrel, I'm very excited to see uh, some high level play with her. She's got a little bit of flack for being easy to counter, uh, especially in high elo. So we'll see how that works out. Art and Sky, we know they're solid. Yeah, that's a really strong comp right there. Uh, you have to imagine that uh, that's the kind of pick that you wanted. Uh, like, you know, everyone likes to play Arden. He's a really strong uh, support, but he plays really good with a lot of hero comps. And so having Arden, but Sky is also a really, really strong hero. And you see a lot of teams running Arden Sky uh, in ranked queues. It's such a popular pick. Their early aggression is strong, and the late game is still is still pretty solid. So it's definitely something that scales well throughout the entire game. And Arden being a really strong, uh, solid player level almost through the whole game. Tails off just a little bit late game, but his gauntlet is so good at trapping heroes so that in late game, you can really isolate a team, even if they're built a little bit higher than you. Yeah, the, the two of them combined have great zoning potential. Between their two ultimates combined, you could create a nice little death trap in the, in the center there. Yeah, so now Team Tass is on the clock. And uh, as I said, they did pick Kestrel. I cannot show you Kestrel because I do not have it as part of my draft application. Uh, so I apologize. But they did pick Kestrel. Um, they do have Kestrel. I want to reiterate that. And they do bit it, put in their two picks. Uh, Bremen, what do you see there? We got Catherine and Vox coming through for their, uh, their second two picks. And I like this. I'm not exactly sure where Vox and where Kestrel are going to go. I feel like they're both effective uh, in the lane of the jungles. It really depends on uh, who the player is. And Catherine, of course, is a uh, maybe the, the second best support, depending on who you ask, next to Arden. So, great call. 
Yeah, and you really have to say, if you don't have Arden, uh, unless you're playing with an Adagio support, you don't see a lot of Finns in competitive play, although he does appear from time to time. So Catherine is usually that go-to second support that you see uh, after Arden, if they can't get Arden. In certain cases, it's definitely not bad to have a Catherine. There's, there's a, a jewel crystal comp that's kind of running around, where Catherine really, really does a good job at countering, but... Very hard to know when you're going to get that. So what's great about draft and bands is you can kind of predict that play. Um, but with uh, Team Task going with Catherine, they basically said, well, we don't have Arden, so that's the second pick. Yeah, I agree. That's probably what, what happened there. All right, so we're just waiting for the, the second, uh, or sorry, the final pick out of Team Vertigo. And uh, it shouldn't be too long until uh, we get that pick in, uh, as it doesn't take a lot of time for these drafts picks. We don't have an official timer, but oh, they do put it in. Oh, they're gonna go with Ringo. Who doesn't love Ringo? Ringo is—he uh, was down on the bottom once when they nerfed him, and I think even SEMC knew that was a mistake, and now he's back, and he's always a factor. Yeah, I mean, Ringo has always been a solid player. He's one of the cheapest heroes to get. He's the hero that you learn Ringo's gold rush in. You learn about last hitting with. Ringo yep. is just that hero that everybody who plays lane or even jungle should master. So it's not a surprise there, though, because Rix is actually a very well-known Ringo player, uh, known for his exceptional play uh, using Ringo in the jungle and in the lane during VGL. So this is something he's a comfort. He's comfortable with this hero. He wants to play this hero. So um, this really helps, you know, plays right into Vertigo's hand, this pick. It's a comfort pick for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's interesting. Both teams have uh, heroes that would be comfortable in the lane or the jungle. Um, I'll just speculate. I know because I have nothing really to go on here, but I'm going to say maybe Vox in the lane. Kesha in the jungle and uh, Ringo in the lane, Sky in the in the jungle. But uh, you probably know a lot better than I would in that. Absolutely. So I would say pretty balanced uh, teams across the board. The Vox Kestrel pick is really, really strong with the Catherine support, but the Ringo Arden Sky pick is also not too bad. You know, Rick's death plays a lot of Arden, uh, Ringo, so he's definitely comfortable with that. The real key here is going to be this early game uh, aggression coming out of Sushi Kid Sky. If he can be really, really strong. Kestrel is very, very strong early game as well. So if if Sushi Kid and Beowulf can do a good job at putting early game dominance against the Kestrel and starve the Kestrel, you have to see that Vertigo will probably do a good job in this match. But if they can't get that early game dominance and, and kind of starve the Kestrel. You have to see that Kestrel, Kid's Kestrel is going to be very, very, very strong. You see it come right out, first stun coming in. Sushi, uh, Kid's already going right in. Sushi Kid not able to get the damage he wants. Tries to put damage on to uh, Midnight Destroyer. Going to go right into a bunch of scout traps there. Takes a lot of damage. Rick's coming down. First kill, though, goes to Vertigo. Well, Sky got her level 2, so she, got, she had both abilities going, which gave her the leg up going into that, but it looks like they're going to return. Maybe bring Arden down. Yeah, you see Rick's doing a lot of stutter stepping. Wow, but oh. Sky goes in with her B ability and picks up the two kills. Very nice play. Oh, fantastic Surrey strike by Sky there, repositioning, and uh, they didn't know where to look, and then they were both down. Really nicely done. You see that a lot with early game invasions or early game team fights where a team sticks around longer than they should and that's exactly what happened. As soon as Sushi Kid went level 2 and had his Surrey Strike, he went right in, uh, was able to, or he had his Surrey Strike first but he got his A ability and B ability and once he was ready to go, he took advantage of it. Kind of lingered in the jungle bushes just for a second, uh, just until he was uh, ready to go in, knew he could get the kill and he went in at the perfect time. I think there the Team Tass sequence break uh, kind of stayed along uh, sorry, sequence points. Or, so, my bad. Sequence break. They stayed longer than they should have. Yes, I agree. And uh, I'm loving what I'm seeing here. Rix is not happy or not content to sit on his laurels. He's pushing the lane hard. He's over the 50, but uh, he's still playing it safe. He's putting a lot of pressure on uh, Genghis Khan in the lane here. Yeah, and you see breaking uh, sequence break. They see that, so they're going to go in for the gank. And they do put a lot of damage. Vox going in. He tries to get the kill and gets it. That was uh, because of all that pressure they were putting on onto uh, onto the Vox, onto Genghis Khan. Sequence break, realizing they need to get in there and return the favor, uh, putting that pressure back in the lane with the nice gank. You see a nice stun coming out on Sushi Kid, and there comes a 2v3 fight going on. We got another jungle fight. They went for the backs, trying to, trying to get a little extra on top of that kill of, of Ringo. 
and they might pay for it. Yeah, they're going to lose Kestrel again. Kestrel trying to go get Sushi Kid, wanted that kill, one more shot, an arrow would have been just what he needed to get the kill. He probably ran out of arrows, though, and he has to, like, not auto-attack for, like, two second, two or three seconds. Because of that, he wasn't able to get the kill. Sushi Kid gets away, Rix comes down, and destroys him. I, I would love to see a statistic on how many deaths were a result of someone trying to chase down this guy, because even if it's, you know, the teammate or what, she is very hard to pin down. Yeah, Midnight Destroyer actually pops a Fallon. Almost gets the dual stun, though. Kid's really impressive able to get the stun. Beowulf almost goes down. Sushi Kid Sky, though, is able to put a little bit more pressure. And there you see nice boots out by Beowulf and Sushi Kid, and they get out of there. That damage is starting to come out real hot from Kestrel, too. She's building up her weapon power. You really got to build uh, health against that because she can chunk you down fast. And I think she's going to be... Uh, a little more difficult to deal with as we're as we're working towards the mid game. Oh, but Rix actually goes in for the kill on Midnight Destroyer. One more shot, gets it. Down goes the support. So Catherine's down. So now this is a three v two, and both the Kestrel and the Vox are separated. So Vertigo's going to go right for Goldmine. Yeah, why not? Neither one of them was going to want to move in on that, and they couldn't get close enough to each other to protect. So. Yeah, Kid's realizing this, knows that the only shot he's got is going trying to get their backs. So he goes right for it, and that clear is so fast. He does get caught, but he gets the backs. That's a huge amount of gold that he gets, even though they don't get gold mines. So this probably paid off, even though he's going to go down right here. Yeah, he probably got a nice chunk of gold out of that, and uh, Vertigo's got a little bit of a gold lead right now, so they probably didn't get too much out of that Kestrel kill. Yeah, but Kestrel able to put so much damage on Bayo. He's going to have to go back. We're going to go back up to the lane, though, where Rix continues to do a good job with the pressure. He's a little bit ahead of Genghis Khan's Voxes with 31 to 27 creep score. Uh, pretty close to balancing that out right about here. But again, Rick's doing such a good job abling to manage around the short range of the early game Vox. Yeah, and you, if you look, everybody's building life, building defense and armor, except Rix. I like, I like what he's doing. He's playing it the way Ringo would play it, where he just wants to go in and, uh, and shoot off his gun and see who falls down first. Yeah, you see Midnight Destroyer, uh, Destro does get caught out there a little bit. So there you see Bayo putting the scout trap around his gold mine. You see a lot of teams put vision around there because as you go take gold mine to and from when you're fighting around there, having that damage is really useful. Beowulf taking a lot of damage from Kestrel though. We got a bit of a mix up going on here. Rick's he picked up the Sour Blade at about 520. So he's going to be putting out hard, but he did go down because he didn't have any defense. Oh, but you see uh, Breaking Point, they're going to get the ace. The Sushi Kid does get the kill onto Genghis Khan and Kids. Unbelievable, but now with only Midnight Destro alive, there's just no way he's going to be able to get the gold mine. That was unbelievable. Sky, right at the last minute, was able to pick up a kill with a Surrey Strike uh, and just go right in there, but does go down, and Team Taz picks up the ace, but they're not going to be able to get a lot out of it. Yeah, fantastic play by both teams there, and Sushi Kid with a clinch double kill right at the end there. He's about to ramp up really fast, I think, and uh, it's going to get it's going to get tough for Team Task going forward. Yeah, just I think bad positioning. I think Team Task felt like they had that ace and they were going to get it and they weren't worrying about where the positioning was. So they just went right in and got played right into Sky's hand even though Sky was clearly going to go down. You don't sleep on Sky, man. She likes to go mock through with her hair on fire. I listen to the dialogue. She don't mess around. Yeah, Sky, a very, very strong pick, very strong hero. Uh, and and you're seeing Sushi Kid doing a great job at utilizing Sky to the full potential. But don't sleep on Kestrel either. Kids is Kestrel, even though they've lost a couple of these team fights or the ones that they've won have not been super strong, they have continually been putting out a massive amount of damage. If they can just get their positioning on par, they're going to be able to take down all of Team Vertigo here. Absolutely. I played enough Kestrel to know that a heavy steel and a six... Uh, six ends is enough to do a lot of damage, and it does. And there you see it, Kestrel coming out there. Really strong play by kids. They put on a show and actually take out both Beowulf and Sushi Kid without a problem. Looks like they're gonna take gold mine of that. Yeah, but Rick not without Rick's putting a lot of damage onto kids. Kids is gonna be taking a brunt of that flame. Genghis Khan going to go back, and you're seeing that because Kids is taking the flame, he's not able to. He sticks around. Rick's doing that probably out of desperation. Doesn't get a lot out of that Hellfire Brew. You know, I thought that maybe that was a little bit more of a, I'm going to do this because I can. He moved down. He wasn't going to make any silly moves and dive in there, but he wanted to put that a little extra damage on uh, maybe as a, as a taunt. 
Yeah, and also he doesn't have a lot of vision, so maybe they were low enough while they were taking gold mine to, to get a kill. It was a, ch a chance that Rix was worth taking. Oh, but he does get caught out. He boots out of there, but gets the stun. Does re avoid all additional damage, though, because he's able to get better positioning. Catherine's Merciless Pursuit, very, very fast. It's very hard to get away. It closes the distance really quick. A nice, long uh, ult from Kestrel there. Took a little bit of a chunk out of Sky. No, oh, Beowulf. Yeah, Beowulf actually walked right in front and actually blocked that damage. Smart positioning by Beowulf, knowing that he can absorb a lot more of that damage than his Sushi Kid can. So Beowulf moves right in front, takes a bunch of that damage, and pretty much is healed back then. So very little out of that snipe, but that's a very fast cooldown. It's going to be back up in no time. Gold's just about even. Kills are just about even. A little bit of a kill lead for Vertigo Black, but... Uh, Team Tass has got the gold lead at uh, 14,000 to 13 and a half. So, I mean, that's not enough to make a huge factor in, but uh, it's pretty evident of, of how close these teams are right now. Wow, you see they're trying to catch Sushi Kid. Now he almost does. And they actually, Sushi Kid, looking like he picks up the gold they were trying to steal. And now Vertigo's going to move up into the lane where Team Tass now has to rotate all the way around. Vertigo gets a position that they want in Team Tass's jungle, pops the scout trap. Do they both take, those some of the snipe damage? Wow, Sushi Kid taking a good chunk, a quarter of his health. Kids is lining up those snipes really nicely. And a little bit more damage, those are going to become powerful. He's got the Sorrow Blade, he's building into what might be a Tyrant's Monocle. Yes, nice scout trap placement by Tass. They've got the vision. Midnight Destro going in with the stun. Gets it on Sushi Kid, but not before uh, he's able to get away. Kids uh, was actually down in the shop, just shopping just a little bit too long and wasn't able to take advantage of that nice stun by Midnight Destro. I thought both teams were going to reset here, but it looks like Tass still wants to do the push. They're clearing out some scout traps from, the, from uh, Vertigo's jungle. They're replacing a few of their own. Vertigo's content to just farm the backs right now. Looks like Sushi Sid's going to back and uh, do a little shopping, do a little healing up. Rix has been up in the lane uh, by himself quite a bit, and I, I think he's content to do that. Yeah, you see another snipe. This time the snipe misses, and someone just mentioned both taking snipe damage. I don't know how else to explain it. The snipe went, both heroes took damage. I didn't see a scout trap there. Uh, maybe I missed it. Uh, you do see now finally Midnight Destro picking up a Fountain of Renewal and a Mini Candy. They're ready for a fight. All the damage coming out of Kestrel is unbelievable. <laughs> Rix does get away though, but not without the ultimate coming out. Beowulf is going to go down, absorbing all that damage for his team, but saving Rix and Sushi Kid, preventing them from getting that team fight the way he wanted. You saw that Genghis Khan and kids were ready to go there. They picked up the Minion Candy just in case it fought around there. They had picked up the Fountain of Renewal. The fight was ready to go. And now you just see, wow, look at the damage coming out of Kestrel. One more shot, down goes Sushi Kid. This is unbelievable amount of damage. Kestrel so strong. Well, that and Genghis Khan infused right before that little scuffle. So they were, they were really dishing it out there. They're going to take down this turret like it's nothing. Doesn't look like they're going to move towards the next one. They're going to respect the power of Ringo and Arden coming back at them. Another snipe. Now at this point, Kestrel's only got a 45 second cooldown on her snipe, so they're not looking to engage probably for another 45 seconds, so he takes advantage of just throwing a snipe out there for her harass. They're going to just go back, rotate for their farm. So that first turret kill by Team Tass, so critical, really good play. Again, the damage coming out of Kestrel is unbelievably high. I mean, even during the fights that Vertigo was winning, you could see it, just the amount of health being deleted during those team fights from her arrows. So Kid's doing a great job. His arrow's absolutely on par. Man, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so enjoying seeing Kestrel out here. They, some great play from her. I've been playing a lot of her lately and uh, listen to the Fold podcast and what Chuck the Fold said. I think I only like to play her and I'm good at her because she's easy to play. And I'm not saying it's simple to do well with her, but uh, if you can target her A ability, you can do some pretty serious damage. Yeah, that's all you really need to do. Her arrows are strong. There is only four of them, though, and you do have to wait between auto attacks. So she's more of a poke hero, kind of like an assassin. Goes in, deals a lot of damage, moves out. She's able to use her B ability to uh, slip away and also have a stun while also using a snipe ultimate. Again, she's very, very all-around an incredible kit. One of my favorite, uh, so definitely an easy pickup for me when I was playing. But you're seeing what Kids is doing with her is just perfection. He has barely missed a single arrow. He's gone in tons and tons of damage he's able to output. Um, and again, a lot of it's just good positioning. You see another good snipe there. That's not easy snipe to make. Plays right in, takes a chunk out of uh, Rick's there. It's almost like you don't even know what he's aiming at at that point, but he, he still hits Ringo with it. That was really that was pretty sweet. 
Yeah, again, short cooldown allows him to just pop that out uh, and control when he wants the team fights. So there's really little that Vertigo can do. Uh, they really need to focus down on Kestrel, but Crystal Vox is so strong that it's going to be really, really difficult in the next couple team fights. So Vertigo at this point literally has to just turtle and get the items they can build so they can start isolating the team fights in their favor. Well, Box has got the alternating current and he has got the broken myth. So if they can get the jump drop on him, they could probably push him down pretty fast because he won't put on a lot of damage in those first few seconds. But you know, he is infusing again, and uh, the longer that goes on, the more trouble is going to be. They are spending their extra money on infusions, but Rick's picked up one in himself. Uh, I think we're going to see some real uh, drag-out brawls going into these next few uh, moments here. Yeah, Team Taz doing a great job staying together. If the only way you can imagine Virgo is going to get the next team fight is if they can isolate and separate Team Taz. Uh, preventing them from clumping together. Oh, Rick's though, all by himself. Beowulf does stick around, though, just for a, probably a gauntlet. You see uh, Midnight Destro going in. Nice gauntlet coming out, though. Uh, sorry, Vanguard out of uh, Beowulf. Does does not prevent the stun, though. But interestingly enough, Team Taz decides not to go into that team fight. I'm pretty sure they had the positioning they wanted. Yeah, I'm not sure why they backed off on that, but maybe, you know, they were getting a little close to the turret. Oh, and yeah. Genghis Khan is caught out. He's going to take a little bit of damage, uses a reflex block. I mean, I'm surprised that Beowulf didn't try to trap him in the gauntlet and get him in there. Whoa, but Rix is half health. Completely deleted. He's going to have to get out of there. Takes a lot of damage. Another arrow, and down goes Rix almost immediately. Keshul takes out Ringo like he is a goat. That was that was brutal. Unbelievably brutal. It was, uh, wow. They've got good positioning here. I think they're going to probably push on this turret. And you see the ultimate coming out of Vox. Both Beowulf and Sushi Kid taking a lot of damage. Sky able to maneuver around, re reduce some of that damage, but the turret, without much they could do about it, is going to go down. Well, Sky's still trying to build up uh, Sushi Kid, rather, into his second tier 3 item. He has been spending money on infusions, which is smart when you're a little bit down because you want to get that extra pop. But uh, Sky really needs at least, I would say, two tier 3 items in the damage department before she can really start dishing it out. Uh, so, you know, another few minutes, Sushi Kid can get back on his feet and uh, bring the hurt back in these fights. Yeah, they, it's really, really close. Sushi Kid able, once he gets fully built, Sky still is also very, very powerful. The team fights, though, need to play into Vertigo's favor. And with all the vision right now in favor of Team Tass, it's going to be really hard for Vertigo to get the jungle position. If team Tass knows exactly where Vertigo is right now. You see scout traps being popped, but they don't take take care of all the other scout traps all over the fold. And then you see Rick's going right in, or kids going right in trying to get down Rick's. Again, they're focusing on Rick's, knowing that Ringo, if he's left to uh, left to do some damage, will start to build. Uh, he doesn't have a breaking point yet, but that snipe oh. again, and the Kestrel, and the sorry, oh. the, the ultimate out of Catherine, perfectly timed, takes down Rick's right away. Yeah, it's, as you can tell, I just had a visceral reaction to that. That was really nicely timed by both players. Beowulf's doing a great job keeping his carries alive here, uh, but uh, it, they just have so much burst damage between Kestrel and Vox. Vox is double infused right now, and if they can get any one of those two carries out for even a moment, they're in trouble. Yeah, you see that there, they're going right for the turret again. The insane amount of damage, but Sushi Kid trying to go in, but he's going to be taking ultimate right from Vox. The Fountain's Pop does save him just for a second, but not long enough. Rick's trying to go in for the kill, and he's just going to be completely surrounded by Team Task. Does pick up the kill, though. He did. He, he got the burn down on Kestrel. Kestrel with another nice alt. Uh, excuse me, kids. Another nice alt on Sushi Kid there. What Just when Sushi Kid was out of the fire, that alt came through and just finished him off. So Beowulf and Rick's able to put one kill onto Team Tass. You have to imagine the gold bounty on that kill. After several fights of not being able to pick up a kill and being able to counter, and with the gold advantage going in favor of Team Tass, that must have been a really nice bounty for Rick's there. Yeah, you know, the, uh, Team Tass has got about 7,000, uh, 6,000 gold lead on Vertigo right now, which is a big lead, but those bounties are huge, and they are starting to build up into a couple tier three items on Vertigo through black so uh, they should be in a pretty good position if they get another couple of kills like that if task gets a little too cocky and tries to push too hard they're going to be in good shape you see kestrel from kids trying to do another snipe again he's got such a short cooldown he's just popping those snipes out and you see that if he sees that he picks up a big one he's they're going in and that incredible snipe on ricks from that last team fight was on point 
again, uh, Kids has been playing, must be playing a lot of Kestrel because he has barely missed a shot. He knows what he's doing. He's landing those arrows. Nice Vertical. vision clear coming out of uh, Team Tass. They're able to clear out the scout traps placed by Vertigo. Uh, not too bad. And there you have Beowulf taking a lot of damage again. You see Sky putting in Hellfire Brew coming out of Rix. The Gauntlet comes down, stuns Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan does go down, but not before taking out Beowulf. The arrows, though, coming out of Kids are still too strong. And he's going to get Sushi Kid. Down goes Sushi Kid, even though the... Oh, and Rix goes down. Wow, Sushi Kid. Basically taking out the entire enemy team. Not Sushi Kid, sorry, Kids. Kids, yeah. He's got this. He's got the Star Blade. He's got the Tyrant's Monocle. He's even got some extra... Looks like even maybe a second Tyrant's Monocle he's building into, and he's infused. He was he popped them both down pretty fast. They do not have enough defense or health to deal with that kind of damage. Yeah, Vertigo doing a good job getting the positioning they wanted, but and they were able to get the Gauntlet and actually zone the Vox kind of where they wanted him, zoned Kids out where they wanted him. But Kids able, arrows are such long range that it just didn't matter. He was able to get the damage, poke down Beowulf right away and then take out the rest of the enemy team, and Vertigo going down. First real significant ace of the game, uh, and that with the Kraken push is really going to allow them to finish this off. Sushi Kid had an unfortunate forward barrage that maybe was directed at the box right before he fell, but then it was facing in the entirely wrong direction, and then he couldn't get the positioning back on the Kestrel to, uh, to engage in that fight properly. You see another nice snipe coming out. Sushi Kid taking a good chunk of that damage again. Nice ultimate, though, coming out of Sushi Kids to try to slow down the, the barrage that's coming out from Team Tass. They're coming right in, trying to go for the turret. Kraken's almost down. They got Kraken down to a quarter health before he she even got to the turret, but Kestrel can just tear down a turret super fast. Hellfire Brew coming right out, going right at the kids and Midnight Destro. They're taking a little bit of burn damage. Kids almost gets the stun, does get the stun on two of them, but not before Genghis Khan with his Vox ultimate takes out Rix again. So Rix just continually gets focused down and goes down. You have to imagine they know with that breaking point now that Rix, if he stays in the fight too long, is going to be able to single-handedly take out the SME team just like Kids is doing with Kestrel. So uh, smart play by... Genghis Khan there to just continually focus to not run scared and they were able to get the uh, counter kill onto Vertigo and uh, keep Vertigo from starting to push. Bell was going to do a little exploring. Is yeah. it a idea? I'm not sure, but I don't think they're going to go in on him. They're going to let him have that time. Probably group back with Kestrel again and go for another push. Yeah, Beowulf the, waiting down just for his uh, his jungler to come down and take some of this gold. He's just kind of he actually missed what could have been a potential uh, gank because you had Team Taz waiting in the jungle, but he rotated around the backside and actually they decided it wasn't worth waiting around for that kind of position for that kill. So they actually disengaged. Uh, Beowulf now coming down and, and Rix and Beowulf taking some of this jungle. Uh, Rix and Beowulf and uh, Vixen they're a little bit starved. It's not a huge gold disadvantage, but it is enough that. Um, that they just don't have the same item buildup uh, that you see coming out of Team Tass, specifically the Vox. The Vox has got three Tier 3 items here, plus some defense, whereas Sushi Kid's only got two Crystal Tier uh, 3 items. But tier, uh, uh, Sushi Kid's actually building a lot more defense, I think, to try to counter the, the team fights continually going against him, but he's just not able to do enough damage, I think, to really uh, turn the balance in favor of Vertigo. Yeah, it's a tough spot to be in. With Sky, you really got to have the damage, and to try and counterplay too much with the defense is going to put you on a disadvantage. But they're pushing into the base here. Uh, Kestrel's got double Tyrant's Monocles now, which is an expensive build, but uh, Kids has been building up enough gold to afford it. Yeah, Hellfire Brew puts a little bit of damage. You see that Crucible, though. That's going to be a huge deal because now they don't have a Crucible to counter what could be a Beowulf stun, but ba they're not going in. Vertigo's avoiding what could be a stun out of Kestrel's Mist. Still, though, Vertigo has a chance to chase here. They're just so afraid. They know that Kids is able to put so much poke damage, and you see it coming out right now. There comes out the gauntlet, but both carries are trapped in, so it's just Midnight Destro that gets caught out, and that's just not the right positioning you want. So Rix goes actually right into the gauntlet. He's trying to pick up the kill on Kids. He knows he needs to. It's just not the right call, and he goes down too. Kids was just on the far end of that gauntlet, and they had Genghis Khan in between them. Who was keeping them from getting close enough because he could have put the damage on them. It was it was a tough spot. It was a you know a great gauntlet by Beowulf, but just positioning was a little tough with the wall there. 
Yeah, and so there you may see this could be game. Uh, Sky has very little time to take out the rest of the team. He's not able to do it. The crystal goes down, and the first game goes to Team Tass. Good game, both teams. Really, really nicely done. So one game going to Team Tass on the blue side. Really impressive. Let's get into the builds here. Uh, the team comps are really what the story is. Uh, the Vox, Kestrel with the Catherine. Even though they didn't have an Arden, Arden's such a, a, a solid support pick. Vertigo able to pick that up, but that Midnight Destro doing a great job with Catherine. Able to get the stuns that he needs, and Kids and Ginkus were just able to position correctly. More importantly though, Kids, very little defense, only 